Hey guys, today I wanted to share with you more about my Mandalorian costume and talking about the vest and the armor. So far on my channel, I've talked about my helmet and my bracers, and I'm really excited to talk to you about this piece. It's a little bit involved, so I'm gonna try and run through it as quickly as possible without skipping some details. And if you guys have any questions at the end, after you've seen this, please ask me down and I will definitely answer where I can. But I wanted to kind of give you a brief overview about what I did and why I did it this way. So to start is the vest. Now, a lot of people, when they start doing Mandalorian costumes, they immediately wanna get into the armor and make their armor and make it look cool. But I'm a believer of always working from the bottom out. So, I knew my flight suit was gonna be a certain way, so that was fine. And then I wanted to work my vest. My vest was gonna be something that inspired me from Boba Fett 1313 and The Mandalorian, that's somewhere kind of in between. So this is where I went. I found a really great textured, uh, canvasy cotton material, and I was able to use that. Plus I used some leather on the top shoulders and the sides, which you'll be seeing here in the close-ups, I'm sure. And then I wanted to give it a good airbrushing. Now the cool thing about making this vest was that I was able to use a t-shirt as my pattern. I threw a t-shirt over top of my flight suit and it was a really good fit. Uh, the t-shirt I was using was a v-neck, which is kind of what I wanted for this. And I used that as a pattern. One of the benefits of being a guy and making your own patterns is that you can use clothing items like t-shirts and long sleeve shirts to kind of come up with that. And that's where I went with that. If you are a woman, typically working on your Mandalorian costume or your vest, you kind of need to take a little bit more care about how you want the vest and the arm to look. So there is going to be a, a million ways to do that. And hopefully on my channel uh, in the future, I will have my girlfriend explain the process that she went through to make her vest, which may help. Well, as I mentioned, Boba Fett 1313 was a big inspiration for me. So I wanted to include leather and straps and buckles, which are on here. The cool thing is finding these buckles uh, by a company called Fidlock which make magnetic buckles. Uh, it was really cool coming across how they were able to use these buckles for walking dogs and making collars and you name it. So this one has eight of those and they just kind of snap together really quick and easy, uh, which hopefully you'll be seeing here. And it makes getting on in and especially out of this really quick and easy. The next part that I really want to talk about is my shoulders. Now, they were heavily inspired by the Mandalorian uh, shore trooper style. I really kind of like that and give a nice shoulder bow look. So I went with that and I went purposely with two different designs for a couple different reasons. One is I wanted to have my whole costume be a little bit asymmetric. I didn't want to have everything kind of match all the way through. And it, and it really, I think, helps make it or sell it as a you Star Wars type costume. The blue and brown one, which you're seeing here, uh, I had a little design competition at home and I had everyone kind of draw a number of designs and I picked the one I like. It was really cool. I had a lot of different ideas thrown at me, but this one was done by my daughter and I really enjoyed it. Plus it incorporated a little bit of the brown that you're gonna see and the blue from my helmet and from the armor. So that was kind of cool. The white one's a little near and dear to my heart. Um, I had a friend of mine who did a clone trooper costume. He was very, uh, he really loved his clone trooper costume. He made it really weathered and it was red and white and he passed away about 12 years ago. And uh, he was a really dear friend and I wanted to honor him somehow in, in a costume at some time. And this costume gave me the opportunity to do that. So I tried to actually match his weathering on his shoulder, uh, Aldrin Bell, uh, Spalder, or whatever the correct term would be, uh, as, as close as possible. And uh, I really, really wanted to take the time to show that a little bit privately, but also, you know, pretty out in the open about my costume. So I also uh, affixed the patch from the file first underneath to remember him by as well. So. That aside, uh, the armor itself was really fun to make. The center iron heart, uh, I did base off of the Mandalorian television show, uh, the, the, his final Beskar version, but I made an independent piece. Uh, and I 3D printed that and prepped it and left it kind of a metal color. That was very purposeful and it is just Velcro to the vest. The other armor uh, on the chest is uh, put on through eyelets, which you're gonna see here. And it's really cool, it's really, really easy that way. Everything kind of just goes in and stays in place. The front armor and the back armor uh, is all made out of a material called Sintra. Now Sintra is, is a dense sign making material, very popular to use for armor this way, mainly because you can shape it uh, with heat 
pour boiling water and you can cut it to pretty much any shape. So what we did is we pretty much figured out using paper templates on my body and on my vest to figure out what the best shape was. We used that, I had it all CNC cut. I also took the opportunity to do trauma plates for two reasons. Uh, that's these little raised bits on the armor which hide the screws that go through. So there are a number of screws holding these armor pieces onto the vest, and then these trauma plates go over top, which hide that without having to fill in the screw. But also gives a little bit of, uh, I feel, like a little bit of depth, a little bit more strength um, in the costume, and makes it feel a little more armored with my, especially with my stature being so tall, I wanted to really feel uh, strong in it. So each of those were made that way. The back was made of roughly about the same, which, which you'll see here in the, in the pictures except I went with a segmented look, and then I uh, went down to painting. Now painting, as I've mentioned, I want to do a tutorial video here, I will hopefully do that in the next few months, uh, but I handled the same way with the bracers, if you watch the bracer video, which is basically doing a silver layer, then a primer layer, and then a color layer, all with revolving uh, liquid latex masking all the way through to get to this look. The back was kind of cool because I wanted to make sure it could easily come off, so it has parachute clips and the magnets to the side, and it has a segmented look so I can still roll around in it, bend over, move around. And it still has that base Boba Fett shape, but it does have all the, the segments in it and then the trauma plates too. When the kit's all together, it really does give a nice impacted look. I hope to be able to talk in the future here about some of the other armor pieces, maybe my legs and knees in the upcoming video shortly, as well as the cod piece and the knees and all those little things. It's a really intricate, layered, multi-piece costume, unlike Jedi or anything that I've done in the past, where it's just a few pieces that kind of go together. This has a lot to it, so I really look forward to sharing that with you guys. But if you have any questions about that speed through about my chest armor, ask me down in the comments below. I really like sharing these, like answering your questions, so please, please ask me at any questions you have, as well as make sure you check out my Instagram uh, and Facebook. They both have some of the progress pictures of while I was making this, so you can kind of see those images and some questions that may have already been answered. But guys, thank you so much for, for watching this video, for liking, and as always, thanks for watching.